Hi, my name is Colton Jackson. As some of you may know, I am passionate about SVGs, and I will defend their use to the death. Uh, I think they're super cool. They have solved a lot of problems in my life. Um, my last job before coming here was uh, working with laser cutters and 3D printers and sticker machines. So I used a program called Inkscape uh, every day to uh, get people's ideas from their heads down into a digital file that they could send to a machine. Um, so I'm going to do a quick demonstration of this free open source layout editor that uh, is really easy to use. It's basically an open source version of Illustrator, but way more free. Um, so if you've ever had a problem that you kind of like wish you knew Illustrator, I'd actually recommend this Inkscape program. It's just kind of more user friendly, less buttons, less toolbars, just kind of lets you get to what you're going for. And uh, so I'm going to show you this program that I like to do, to do design work in. And then I'm going to show you what's so cool about this file format and why I love using it. Um, so that's going to be the SVG file format. And then uh, once I show you that, uh, we'll show you how to integrate it into our stack store. Um, so just to show you what I'm talking about, um, our stack store has these React components with ticket components. And um, this is a layout that involves rotated text and things that are in like different rows and columns. Um, and uh, when we were designing our website, we thought, OK, it'd be really cool if you could actually see the tickets in your cart. So when you go to the show, you can actually just pull up the ticket, and that's the ticket that you would scan. Um, so we said, OK, we're going to try to make them look like tickets. And, I, and, I, and in trying to design a component, um, I think it's really difficult to switch back and forth to like, design something from scratch in like, CSS and Bootstrap. So if I was to like, draw this on paper and then like, try to figure out my box model of what div would go in what div would go in what, what div, um, it's difficult to design that way because you have to think uh, how you want it to look, and then you have to think, well, how would I code that? And you have to switch back and forth. So instead, um, I designed the ticket component in this program called Inkscape. So cross-platform, free, open source. Um, and it allows you to copy-paste in bitmaps. So this is a kind of an inspiration I took off Google Images. And then it lets you have uh, text components. So you can just type anywhere on the screen um, and then have an object that you can move around, resize, scale. So in that, it's like your typical layout editor. Um, it also has a lot of tools to draw stars. Oh, that's a really crazy star. <laughs> That's still, oh, random, th this is a really interesting. Yeah, so the randomized attribute of stars uh, allows you to make modern art. Uh, so it's a really fun program. I've used it to teach like 10 year olds design. Uh, but so the stars, rectangles. So to make my ticket, I kind of started out with um, just a rectangle. And you have a free draw tool that you can just draw lines with or draw any shape you can think. So if, if you've used Illustrator or Vector Graphics, you've seen this kind of tool before. Uh, but if you haven't, then I recommend playing around with it. These are called Bezier curves. And um, they're a really neat shape. Uh, it's a really neat mathematical model that lets you define really any shape with like a few points. This is you know, one, two, three, four points. And each of these points has um, kind of modifiers that define the curve. Um, but that is like a different talk. So I'll leave it with rectangles and text for now. Um, yeah, so some of the things that make this useful as far as like designing a component instead of trying to do um, HTML and CSS is I can just like, of course, drag things around to where I want to put them. Uh, and so I say these things are going to be grouped together. I can select a couple of things, um, use my align tools, and then group them and duplicate them and rotate them 90 degrees. And so like this would take a really long time to like prototype in HTML and CSS. So I really like using this style of program um, just because it helps me think about design way faster than trying to do it from scratch. Um, OK, so I sat down for 10 minutes with my group, um, kind of did a ticket mock-up that ended up looking like this. Um, the barcode, by the way, is just a font. It's called Code39. So whatever I type, um, if I go to edit this, I can actually just like type in barcodes. So our ticket ID gets transformed into a barcode. That's cool. Um, but I said, OK, this is how we want our tickets to look. And everyone's like, yeah, it'd be cool if that's how it looked on our website. So OK, so that said, I have how it, I want it to look. Um, so I'll go to 
like a little bit of difference of why it's so useful to be using this program instead of like Microsoft Paint or Microsoft Word or something. Um, so this, uh, da, 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 this super educational slide um, I have saved as a PNG, which is a bitmap, and an SVG, which is a vector graphic. Um, so as you can see, they're both displaying the same information, but uh, these are kind of two different data structures uh, to render graphics in. So any time that we've been talking about like operations you can do on an array, but not on a hash table, or vice versa, things that you can do on a hash table but not on an array, bitmaps and vector graphics are pretty similar. They're two different ways of representing like identical information, like they're showing the same graphic, um, but a PNG is a bitmap. So that, that means a couple of things. That, that means if I zoom in all the way, um, that you start getting sort of the rough edges, because you can see the pixels. It's made of pixels. It's a bitmap. Uh, and on an SVG, if I zoom, I can zoom in as much as I want, and it will never get pixelated, because the browser is actually re-rendering this shape the more you zoom in. Um, so the way I like to put it usually is like a bitmap is made of pixels, and a vector graphic is made of math. Uh, so a lot like, uh, like if you take this SVG and import it into any 3D graphics program, it'll be able to um, manipulate it all the ways that, uh, that Sophia was talking about, because these are just lines defined as curves, um, and you can give them a third dimension, and suddenly you have 3D graphics. Um, so that's kind of like the practical um, application as far as choosing a data type to display on your website. You might um, you know, have a logo that if you export it as like a 200 pixel by 200 pixel image and then try to use it on your homepage, it's all ugly and pixelated and you can tell that the person doesn't know what they're doing. But if you save it as an SVG, you can render it tiny or giant and it will re-render to fill that size so it like always looks crisp and good. And, uh, but that's, so that's like the front end. If you switch to the back end, I'm gonna say like the PNG or rather like how it's saved on disk. You have PNG and SVG. Um, you can open those files in a text editor and you get this. So the PNG is a bitmap, it's a binary file. Um, so if you open it up in a hex editor, like there's no way that you can go in and edit that by hand. Um, but then on the right side, that is how the SVG is saved on disk. So it looks a heck of a lot like HTML. So basically, SVG saves as an XML, and XML and HTML have a common ancestor. So they both use tags, attributes, um, and they both have like a tree data structure. Um, so uh, if you open this in a web browser, such as Chrome, we got it, the SVG here, I'll zoom back out. Um, if I view source on the PNG, of course, you know, you'll just see like image style source is the stat PNG. If I view source on my SVG, uh, it is rendered um, as a tree. So I can access each individual element, and if I want to grab my title here uh, and change its color, I can do that. Um, so this is uh, information that's on the DOM. I can access it via JavaScript. I can change its attributes via JavaScript. Um, and that makes, that's what makes it such an interesting file type to me. So basically, back to the story of uh, my Friday night, uh, we like, decided that this ticket looked good, and we wanted it on our website. And I said, great, this, uh, why am I going to sit here and like start from scratch with divs and CSS when Inkscape just saves um, this XML file. It's in plain text. I can drop it into HTML. Um, so, um, so I thought I was, so I was being really optimistic, and I went to my JSX file, and I just dropped that original SVG into my render function. So I just returned that big SVG to see if it would work, and it did not work. Uh, it like my webpack threw a ton of errors about unsupported React components, and so I got to that point in my project where I lost faith in my own intuition, and I had to go read the docs. So I went to the DOM React docs and found out, oh yeah, there's quite a few things like React supports SVG, but it, uh, but it, but you have to represent it differently. So for instance, uh, in HTML, you have uh, this, like if you do inline style, you have a string in quotes with the style elements being semicolon separated. I don't know why I'm trying to say it out loud when I have it on my screen. So, uh, right, it's in a string, semicolon separated, um, that's an inline style. JavaScript, uh, or rather React wants that in a JavaScript format when it renders it in JSX. It wants those styles to be in an object 
in the object sense axis, of course, um, comma separated values, um, not semicolon separated values. It had the further um, restriction that the uh, names cannot be hyphen separated, they have to be camel case. Um, so basically, I was reading these uh, things that I, I would have to get the support. I'm out of time. So, uh, so I'm not going to do a live regex, but I solved my problems with regex and uh, was able to take like the strings and the camel case and convert them into, um, to meet all those requirements of React. And now when you go to our Heroku app, um, these are React components with all the database information pulled into them. Um, so yeah, Inkscape's really cool. Um, sometimes regex gives you zero problems. And uh, yeah, if you have any string substitution problems, it ended up being kind of fun for me to solve. So thanks. <laughs>